I'm joined with the director of Lloyd's Group, uh, Dr. Lahodi. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you very much. Are you looking forward to the event? I'm really, really excited about the event, and it's such a lovely atmosphere going on here at the moment. How did you get involved with the organisation? Well, I know Sadia for a number of years, and in fact, I nominated her for the Asian Women of Achievement Awards that I used to sponsor. So I've seen her grow and a production company grow, and it makes me really proud to see a woman actually really, you know, doing very, very well in what she does. Excellent. And what's, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think will be your highlight of the evening? You know, to me personally, I, what I'm looking for is the collaboration between India and Pakistan. When you see our communities come together, it really makes me feel really humble that we could go so far, do so much, and achieve so much. And when the communities come together like they have tonight, and it, you know, I think I wish more people could see this and actually join it and enjoy it. And what would you like to say to my female viewers that are perhaps interested in, you know, getting involved in event organising, banking, such as yourself? What would you say to them if they're, they they incur any struggles, any hardship in future? You know, um, I had an arranged marriage. I still live with my in-laws, and so you can have it. Uh, it's not easy. But at the end of the day, you don't have to lose your identity, you don't have to uh, lose your culture. And long as actually, if you really appreciate each other, and having daughters, we sh we've got to encourage them, we've got to support them. And But also at the same time, I think the children need to appreciate the foundations our forefathers built, the culture of being the community spirit, and if they could take the best of what our, our forefathers actually taught us and the best of what Britain has to offer, they could go really, really far. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to have you on the show. Have a lovely evening. I'm delighted to be standing here with two very, very great journalists here from the Asian industry. Poonam and Vijay, welcome. How are you tonight? We are very well, thank you. Lovely to see you. Thank you very much. Are you looking forward to the Godzilla event that's taking place here tonight? Absolutely. I mean, having, even, even um, not being from India, um, I'm a huge fan of Guzzles and um, I, I think she introduced me to Guzzles a long time ago and I am absolutely looking forward to it. Fantastic. And what are you looking forward to seeing? What, do you, what is your highlight? Because obviously they're playing tribute to people like Nusra Patili Khan, um, they're playing tribute to Mohammad Rafi. Who are you looking forward to hearing most? I actually had a little chat with the, 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 the person who is going to sing tonight, uh, Mr. Devda Joshi. He told me, I mean, my favorite personally is Jagjit Singh, but he's going to sing Kishore Kumar as well as Mohammad Rafi, which will be like icing on the cake. So it's, I just can't wait. Excellent. Thank you so much for being on the show, both of you. It's a pleasure to see you. I'm thrilled to be standing with two people from the Asian media industry who need no introduction, the one and only Mr. and Mrs. Rishi Rich. Pleasure to have you on Talk of the Town. How you. are you tonight? Yeah, we're fine. I mean, uh, it's great to be here. Uh, wonderful event, uh, good people and um, lovely place. So, um, yeah, looking forward to you know hearing the music and um, supporting what Sadia is doing. Excellent. And Marina, how did you become involved in the organisation tonight? How did I become involved? Um, I got invited along with Rishi. I know that I'm particularly involved, but I'm looking forward to finding out what it's about. Well, you're his date. That's more than involvement. Uh, I'm his wife. He has to bring me. <laughs> Fantastic. Rishi, music-wise, where have you been? What have you been up to? Um, uh, I'll be working on my album, which is finished, so it's coming out. Great news! Yeah, yeah after like seven years. You know what? Yeah. It's been a long wait. Yeah. As a huge fan, I'm seriously not just saying that because I'm standing with you, but as a huge fan, I'm telling you, we are waiting. No, thank you. I mean, I've done the odd kind of like, obviously I did the Miss Pooja stuff and the Bonafide and Usman Rehman stuff, um, but this is like an 18 track. It's, it's full of everything, you know, that I've been working on and I hope people like it. It's got the signature Rishi Rich trademark, has it? It has, and it's featuring artists that, you know, I've grown up listening to and um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's my best piece of work. Excellent. Well, I certainly cannot wait for to hear it, and I know my viewers at home can't wait. But truly, when can we expect the album to be out? You said okay. I mean, um, I've, I'm lining up the singles. I've got the Master Selim single first, um, and then it will be either the Jazzy uh, or the Sonu. Then there's Shazia. Then there's Juggy. Then there's Abra, uh, uh, Shazia Manzoor. Who else? Um, it's like a, it's like a series of names. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's everyone. Hunters, and you know, there's a lot of people on there. And um, but I I want to kind of. I want to now gradually like introduce the album so the first single will come out and then maybe the second then the album so I think you know via summer yeah. amazing I'm now joined with Mervish the CEO of Care Pakistan Mervish thank you so much for giving us your thank time you. thank you for having us it's an absolute pleasure tell me how did you become involved with Care Pakistan I've been involved in the charity sector for a long time and um, we were looking for a solution really to I've been working in the charity sector for a long time and been getting thousands and thousands of children into schools but we were looking for a solution that would help us get a million children into school and we want to do this by 2015 and care provides a really sustainable model mm -hmm. we can we provide education for just one pound a month and we do this by um, uh, renovating 
old uh, sort of government uh, schools that have uh, failed mm -hmm. and we sort of save on land costs and um, we save on expensive building costs so in that way we're able to provide education to some of the poorest children in the country for just one pound a month amazing yes and I'm gonna ask you a question now and I've asked someone else's tonight as well with charity, and I'm going to be very blunt, and sure. please don't think I'm being insolent no. in any way, but we often hear so many people raising money for charity, whether it be tsunami victims or for victims of earthquakes or, you know, children who want to have an education back home, but it's very expensive for them. And people then question it. They wonder, where is their money genuinely going to these causes? What do you have to say to my viewers at home that are perhaps interested and would like to donate money, but are thinking, oh, is it really going to go to those innocent children that really want an education? I would say that um, the proof is in the pudding. Go and see the schools. Mm -hmm. And they are testament to themselves, really. Where are the schools? They if anyone wishes to go. Over, yeah, absolutely. They are all over Pakistan, but mainly in the Punjab, okay. because that's just where it sort of started from. Um, and because we have such a big task ahead of us, uh, seem Mozi is the founder of the charity. She's she's based in Punjab, and she sort of started from there and is working her way out. And it's just a matter of funds. Um, we've moved into Sindh, we've moved into Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, and we're planning to just keep on ex sort of keep expanding. We have 224 schools. We have 165,000 children in these schools. They are testament to what we're doing, and we've been going for a quarter of a century. Wonderful. And where do you see the organisation going now? What's the, what's the future? I know you have a goal by 2015, yes. but where after that? I think we're just to keep growing and also just to sustain what we have. We've got a lot of children in our system and we have to look after them. And what would you like to say to my viewers at home that are perhaps interested in becoming volunteers and getting involved in the organisation themselves? Absolutely. Um, I mean, we have lots and lots of schemes. We have an ambassador scheme. We have people can volunteer at any level. They can get really involved or just involved on the ad hoc basis. They can spread the word. They can donate. Um, you know, there's lots of exciting events. So there's lots of things they can do and please do visit our website which is www.carepakistan.org.uk and there's lots of information on there and if you can't do anything then just spread the word. <laughs> It's a pleasure to be standing with a gentleman who needs no introduction. I'm joined with Lord Noon. Welcome. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you very much. How are you finding the evening so far? No, it's very good. Actually, it's a mixed crowd in a sense, and I'm very, I'm delighted to see it. The lots of Pakistanis and Indians are intermingling with each, each other, and it's a great change because I, I hardly see such such sort of a scenario in the in our society. But it's a very good, and I think I congratulate Sadia for. Uh, organizing this and I'm very grateful that she has asked me to come and also speak uh, and on this function and she's a great lady I like her very much in a sense that you know she is she is doing a she's an entrepreneur and their achievers uh, achievers program on before before you is extremely successful how did you get involved with care UK uh, well care UK I'm I was uh, in care international UK I was the director once upon, because it's a very large organization but I believe this care is only confined to Pakistan, mm -hmm. while that the care which I'm talking about was international care. So okay. I was a director for some years with them. And where do you see the organization going now in the future? The, the, which organization? Mm -hmm. Mustan. Well, it will go very well because I think it is handled very well. And the programs which comes on before you about achievers and all are very credible. credible. And uh, I think if he continues like this, uh, I think he, she has a place in the, in the media. Definitely. Thank you very, very much. I'm delighted to be standing with a lady of the hour. This lady needs no introduction. She's familiar to all of you at B4U. This is the presenter as well as founder of Mustang Productions. I'm joined with the delightful Sadia Siddiqui. How are you, Sadia? And congratulations on tonight being such a great success. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's like a little baby of mine, Mustang. And, you know, I've been wanting to do this launch. It's been long overdue and um, worked very hard. And I'm so glad you all are here to support it. Well, we're absolutely delighted to be here. And obviously, you're part of the B4U family, so we're going to support you naturally. But it's it's been a long struggle, no doubt about it. How did you begin with creating Mustang? You know, when I started Achievers, that's when I thought of creating Mustang because um, Achievers was the first talk show ever in history since 1947 that actually creates a platforms for both Indians and Pakistanis to be interviewed on one platform. It's never been done before, whether it's a Pakistani channel or Indian channel. And I think it's a, I'm not saying it because it's, I mean, it's a B for You camera crew, but it's a progressive thinking of B for You and the support that B for You and Kevin gave me that I could create Achievers. And I thought if I can do Achievers, I need to have a production house behind it. So, you know, because I'm the executive producer to raise finances, so on and so forth, 
And of course, I've been doing events for eight years, so I thought I'll put events and production under one umbrella of Mustang. So what have we got to see from you now in the future? Achiever season three, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but tonight's a night is going to be fantastic. We've got some, a great crossover performer here tonight. We've got a crowd from the media world, the political world, the social world. The, so, uh, uh, you've got so many guests from uh, an array of walks of life, I, I should know. say. How did it take? How long did it take you to put a night like to get tonight together? Three months. Three months, but three months around the clock. Three months, because obviously I was doing it on my own, and and uh, you know there were no. It, it was difficult on your own to get those sponsors on board, as everyone knows. You know, economically, situation is tight right now. But I managed to do that, and you know, through this process, you learn so much, and then you also learn that you know people are out there and they they will support you. But you've just got to put one foot forward, and until unless you don't put that one foot forward, you wouldn't know what's out there. What what can you reach out to? You've got to take that first step. And I'm so glad it all came together. Well, it has, and the night looks amazing. Thank you so much for having us, Sadia. A pleasure as always, and we'll see you very soon. Well, I hope you enjoyed the first half of the show. We're having an incredible time here tonight at the Mustang launch in central London. There's so much hustle and bustle going on, and we've got a huge array of performances coming up for you very, very soon. But for now, we're going to head off to a short few eensy weensy teeny weeny messages, and we'll be right back here in the second half with a lot more action here in central London.